Peasant Productions presents the Mathematics of ESP, why it works even if you don't believe in it. Um, asking for help to do a Patreon to try and create a um, Occupy International Space Station, Occupy ISS International Space Station. Um, just for a moment, let's suppose I'm correct. You people have 10 years before you will be decimated off the planet. Um, does that mean that, you know, 10 years from now, you're going to be a flip switch and you're all going to drop dead? No. It means over the next 10 years, everything's going to get really, really pretty freaking crazy and pretty, pretty pitiful. Um, give you an understanding of what I'm talking about, okay? There, there's numerous stuff coming out about how plastic, which is a byproduct <coughs> of the oil corporations. Remember, it's a byproduct. It's not, it's not the main thing they're going after, but it's very profitable to sell the stuff. Um, take a list sometime at all the plastic products. You'll find that there, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple of thousand items that are made from oil company, corporation, profit, plastic. Um, recycling, of course, is a laughing joke because as far back as probably the 70s and early 80s, it was very apparent to those who had their eyes open that recycling in America was a collection of bottles and plastics and electronics and whatever else and shipping it to a third country that didn't have environmental regulations so there wasn't any problem just throwing it on the ground. They didn't even have to bury it man, just throw it on the ground in a third world country. The people over there are too stupid to know anything. They won't care that they're eating cancer. They won't care that they're walking in cancer. They won't care that they're, they're, they're up there eyeballs in pollution because some rich, arrogant countries don't care about them. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it, at, at the very least, that was in the 1980s. It was very prolific through the environmentalist groups that we had to make a change. Not just running around screaming about having committees, but actually do something different. As Einstein said a great, <coughs> great many years ago, if you do the same thing over and over and over again, you are obviously quite insane if you think that you're going to have a different result by doing the same thing every time. If I always put coffee in here, it's always going to be a coffee cup. If I put tea in there like it is now, it's not a coffee cup, is it? It's just an insulated cup. Um, International Space Station, like I said, I have ideas, I have understandings, I have abilities, things that I created or conceived of back in the early 70s on up into the mid-1980s. This included an entire economic system in space. This included an entire survival system in space. This included an entire ability to clean up 99% of the problems that existed during that point in time. Now, you no longer have that ability, okay? Um, like I said, there's an awful lot coming out about all the plastic pollution. Everywhere you look, Everything is extremely connect, connected to and contaminated by plastic, bits of plastic, pieces of plastic, various types and levels and stuff, all the way down to the little micro beads that they put into the conditioners and the face cleansers and the toothpaste, <laughs> you name it, okay? There, there's all kinds of stuff that's out there, and the stuff that's been out there for 40 or 50 years is, is slowly breaking, not down into base product, but breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces of plastic. So we are routinely seeing whales, dolphins, fish, turtles, birds, uh, squirrel, you name it, bear, Every, everything's got plastic in its guts, everything's being failed nutritionally. And all of a sudden scientists 
you know, ha have bacteria that are going to release in into the atmosphere, uh, release into the oceans. It will eat plastic. Interesting concept, huh? They're going to release something that devours plastic into an environment that they have no control over. And you have plastic cars, plastic doors, plastic windows, plastic, well, that's not plastic clothing, but, you know, here's plastic right here, see? You think I want to come out someday and find this all devoured by <coughs> microbes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Be kind of interesting. It def definitely saddened me a little bit that my cup was worthless simply because it was sitting out in the open air, huh? That's the logic of these people. Yeah, we'll, we'll just create another GMO and throw it out there, okay? The Atlantic salmon farm raised stuff, when in the 70s and 80s they were talking about it, they guaranteed that there would never be a release into, into the environment. There would never be an unsafe release. There would never be, you know, accidents and all that kind of stuff. And of course, the, the people that don't fact check, people who do not stop and look at anything, bought it up. Lock, stock, and barrel. Just like they buy up the idea that the petroleum companies don't ever have oil leaks and their pipelines don't ever burst and, and, and tankers don't run aground and break apart in storms and all of that kind of stuff. It, it never really happens because we don't look. We're Donald Trumps. We're blind to reality. We're just going to get ourselves some pussy. Yeah. So, needless to say, yeah, you, you, you got a very messed up world right now. You got an awful lot of problems. You don't have any answers for it. And if a few hundred thousand germs, bacteria, and viruses are out there in this extremely toxic waste, creating mutations of their own, yeah, they do that. Naturally, they mutate. Every year, the, the virus is something different. Every year, the uh, American government's hollering to get your flu shots, and only, only these types of flus exist, and this one's going to cover it all, and every year, they're wrong. <clears throat> that makes you wonder who's making the most money off of flu shots. Um, probably the virus makers, right? Anyway, um, you don't have much time left. Because your society is going to start falling apart and decaying. You're going to start fighting. You're going to be like uh, Flint, Michigan up there with all that nice polluted water being told that Nestle just, that sells them a little one liter bottle of water for three or four dollars. And they're the ones with polluted water. Uh, Nestle just bought a whole bunch of Lake Michigan. Actually, they got polluted pipelines, which pollutes any water that goes through their pipeline. But Lake Michigan's also pretty polluted. But Nestle got to buy, I think it was, what was it, uh, 700 million gallons? No, no. 1. 1, 1, 130 million gallons of water to sell. And they only paid $200 for it. Wow. Poor Flint, Michigan, huh? Um, but, you know, hey, no problem. The government's taking care of things. They just sold the water rights to Lake Michigan to um, Foxcom. Foxcom is one of the, the like top four electronic manufacturers. They need to use 700 million gallons of water a day for processing electronics and washing all the impurities and stuff off. Which means Lake Michigan is going to be very polluted with leads, tin, arsenic, a few things like that that are used in the processing of gold, silver, electronic PVC boards, you know, all that kind of stuff, PCPs and things like that. All that kind of mess and slop that's in there is now going to be dumped at a rate of 700 million gallons a day into Lake Michigan. So, like, so... Poor little old Flint, Michigan, who thought they won something by getting the world to realize that they had very polluted water and the government wasn't doing anything, and now just finding out that they're that much worse off because their government is continuing to sell them out. So what do you think, folks? You think you want to keep playing the same old game with the same people for the same 
players for the same partners, the same stakes are involved. You don't you don't get survival because you're not doing anything to get anywhere. You're just playing ring around the rosies and ashes ashes you all fall down. Hmm? Or you know, do you want to consider not just me, <clears throat> but a few of these other people out there in the world that are talking these really extravagant ideas of actually getting off the planet, doing something. Now I'm not talking about uh, uh, the lizard people who think that you know, who, who uh, the conspiracy theory, you know, the, the lizard people are going to come and terraform the planet and use humans for food, right? We discussed that in in, in other places, but um, the easy thing to say is go look at those lizard people and then go back and I believe the series was called V. Uh, it was about lizard people hiding in human bodies attacking Earth. It was 1980s, I believe, early 80s. It wasn't, it wasn't real popular as far as I understood, but it might have been a pretty popular show. So here we have the conspiracy theorists uh, lizard people attacking and their lizards look exactly like those. In some cases they look like you know that, that one that Kirk had to fight on that alien planet back in what, the 1970s, 71, something like that. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're distracting you, you know, the, the divide and conquer. What all I'm doing is saying, hey, why don't we all start thinking about working together Let's take over all the, all the spaceport stuff. Let's take over all of the stuff necessary to get it together. Not because we want to make money, folks, but because it, it, at least as far as I'm concerned, it's it, it's an animal instinct to try and survive. Humans are a little bit below animal right now because all they can think of is suicide, um, and that's pretty stupid as far as I'm concerned. Uh, with my rating of connection, you know, this Revelations 2.17 thing here, with my rating there, and by the way, you know, those of you that don't understand, go out to the spiritual realm, talk to the, you know, the uh, Christ entity, the El Cristo entity, whatever you want to call it in your language, um, and ask him, you know, did he in fact tell me to go read a Bible when he handed me the Revelation 2.17 stone because at that point in time I had never read the Bible. Okay, Kind of shuts you down real fast when I have something happen to me that I didn't pre-read about. I'm not one of your little fantasy children, you know, I'm not like this church here in town that's got an absolutely covered in gold statue that they brought over from England somewhere. I'm uh, not England. Over from Europe, okay. Um, and they claimed that it was it was brought here. If you read the story of the town, it was a peasant child or a peasant woman's doll that did the saving. You go look at my website. Look at the pictures of that. They totally encrusted in gold. And you know damn well, no little peasant kid had it. No peasant mommy had it. A rich aristocrat, maybe. A wealthy family, yes, very definitely. A very powerful church bringing something to awe people because it's all gold. Oh my God, it's gold. It's sad to be so close to God because it's made from gold. God don't care about gold. It's just another thing made by the process of an exploding star. Um... It's just another process, a piece of mineral that's in this in this realm, and not even, and that you can't even guarantee me gold is in an, is in another physical realm, folks. So yeah, think about it. You want to try and live. I can't guarantee I will succeed, um, simply because I don't I don't I don't do that. Uh, I have a very high track record of of succeeding, though. So yeah, think about it. I don't know.